Welcome to Watch Therefore, the program designed to help the disciple of Messiah Jesus obey his command to watch therefore and be ready for you don't know the hour or the day the Son of Man is coming, coming to take us back to that place he's prepared for us. Dove Schwartz here at the Sea of Galilee, encouraging everyone who's watching today more than ever to watch therefore and be ready. Jerusalem's Zion's king will restore the land, the clouds will part, and our king will descend, the fire in his eyes, seven stars, his right hand. Welcome to the program. I'm so thankful once again, that we're together in Messiah Jesus, our great God and Savior. And I'm also thankful to be part of this unique generation where he has placed us. It's going to be such an exciting generation for those who understand and, and know how to think, speak, and live. If you haven't received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, please do so today, or this generation will be very difficult for you. Now, I'm continuing a teaching from my book, Watch Therefore and Be Ready. It's a teaching through the scriptures that will prepare believers in Jesus for this generation. And uh, I started this teaching at the end of Matthew chapter 23, this part of the teaching we're in now. Uh, and so if you haven't uh, seen that, you can look at archive programs to catch up with us or get my book, Watch Therefore and Be Ready. So we're gonna continue on beginning in Matthew chapter 24, verse seven, but first, a word of prayer. Oh, Holy Father, in Messiah Yeshua, our Lord Jesus' name, we bless your holy name. We ask you to bless all of our precious viewers today in Messiah Jesus, we ask it and trust that it will be so. Amen. So in Matthew chapter 24, uh, beginning in verse 7, our Lord Jesus speaks of the signs of his coming and the end of this age. Signs are very important. Now, just think you're driving up the road and there's a sign that says road closed in front of you. What happens if you just continue to go straight and you don't make an adjustment, you don't make a turn? Well, you get into a very hairy situation. And if it uh, leads you into a, a horrible wreck, it could have consequences that could be ongoing and even very, very dangerous. We need to pay attention to the signs the Lord gives us for this hour. You know, there was a time where not understanding Bible prophecy, it was never good to not understand God's word as a believer. Yet at this time to not understand Bible prophecy can be disastrous. We need to look at the signs. And, and, and we did so in the last program. We looked at the sign of nation rising up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. We know that the word nation is the Greek word ethnos before the Bible was translated into English from Greek. Ethnos ethnic group will rise up against ethnic group. And I spoke about how these signs that we're going to read about in just a moment, they work together in concert with one another. Now, these things have always been taking place since there have been people on the earth, but they're working together now and they're bouncing in the red zone like never before, along with other signs our Lord speaks about that we'll go into in further teachings. So uh, beginning of verse seven, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Uh, the beginning of sorrows is an old English way of saying the beginning of birth pangs. So I want to say th something before I begin discussing uh, two signs with you today uh, on the program. I'm going to talk about famine and pestilence. First, I want to share with you that it, it has been said that ignorance is the seedbed of destruction. And the Apostle Paul told us that we need to watch and be sober. That means clear thinking. Why am I telling you this? Well, much of what is modern Western Christianity today says, if it doesn't tickle my ears or promise me wealth, I'd rather not hear it. 
I'd rather not think about that. I'd rather not look at it. It could be depressing. And so, no, we need to not be like Alice in Wonderland. We need to, to be people who face the things that are taking place in our generation, especially this generation. And I'll talk with you later in the program about how that will produce great joy and, 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 and confidence and more. So I'm going to talk to you now about famine. Don't look away. This is, we need to understand what's going on. Think of this, that in the year 1800, the early 1800s, there were about 1 billion people on planet Earth. Today, just over 200 years later, there are 815 million hungry people on planet Earth living in areas where there's scarcity of food. Mostly, this is in Africa and Asia. But there are American drought conditions right now that I think we should consider. Now, I'm going to read a few newspaper headlines. The first one says this. Drought conditions in the Southwest are so bad that they are already being compared to the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. The second one, Dust Bowl conditions have returned to Kansas, Oklahoma, and North Texas. And the third article I'm reading today, Dust Bowl days are here again. The current drought started in 2012, the hottest year on record in the U.S., and has embroiled the country in the worst drought since the Dust Bowl of the 1930s. Now, folks, this is a sign of the times. First, that there are this many hungry people on planet Earth more than ever before at the same time of the uh, previous birth pain I spoke of that the, our Messiah Jesus teaches about in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. And, and we see here that, that famine is on the earth like never before. And, and we live in the West and, and specifically in America with this concept like that man, tr scarcity of food could never be a problem in America. We, we kind of think that like food grows in the back of a grocery store super center. But there are real threats even today for America. There's a, uh, the electronic magnetic pulse threat, uh, a, a massive cyber attack threat, and solar irregularities that are becoming more regular because of the sign of the times. And, and so, or the signs of the times. And, and so these things threaten uh, the food supply in America. The, the disruption of farm to market is very would be very fragile today compared to many years ago. Many years ago, 40, 50 percent of Americans grew their own food. Today, 2 percent of Americans grow their own food. Now, whether food scarcity becomes a problem in America or not, the reality is this sign is upon us. It's the sign of the coming of Messiah Jesus. But we know that with regard to birth pangs, they increase in frequency and intensity. And, and, and I want you to know, this is not a prepper message. Hey, praise God, if the Lord has led you to prepare for trouble. You know, um, my, my grandmother uh, uh, wasn't a, uh, the, the one I'm about to mention, she wasn't a, uh, a, a Christian or, or a, a, a Bible God-fearing woman, but but my family from back then they they had a food cellar. They had canned food and jarred food, and they they had things stored away in case there was trouble. How much more uh, might the Lord lead some people to prepare for these times in certain ways? But that's not what this message is about, because the the Lord may not lead you to prepare that way. He may lead you a different way. Now, this is a watch therefore message. These are signs of the coming of our Savior, Messiah Jesus, and we know they're going to get more frequent and intense until there's a birth, which I'll talk about in future programs. The birth that's coming. Hallelujah to the earth. And, and so we're to be watching for his coming even more so as we see these signs. And we are to be the faithful servant who's, who's not only watching for him to come, but doing what he commanded. Like never before, I believe we need to pray the Lord's Prayer and trust in him for our daily bread. We need to become more reliant. It's not that we're not already reliant upon God. Even if we don't think with, that we are, he's the one who provides 
uh, food on the earth, even for people who don't believe in him. He's merciful and kind to do so. But we should understand more and trust more and be more reliant upon him. We who know, in him, we who know him and trust in him uh, need to trust in him this way, in a deeper way. I'm going to read part of the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6, beginning verse 9. In this manner, therefore pray, our Father in heaven, holy is your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Folks, I'm learning every day to thank the Lord, our Lord Jesus, for my daily bread. I was listening to a pastor from uh, Southeast Texas one time, and someone asked him, a pastor, should we pray every time we eat, or can I just pray in the morning and that cover all the meals? And here's how he answered. He said, sir, if you've been the places I've been in the world and see the things I've seen, you'd thank the Lord every third bite. You'd thank the Lord every third bite. We need to remember that famine is one of the signs of the coming of the Lord. It's widespread in the earth like never before, affecting more people than ever before. We need to watch and be ready for our king to come. And we, we need to trust in him and be thankful to him for our daily bread. There was a man who went speaking in churches, he was a Jewish man that survived the Holocaust. He said of all the horrors of the Holocaust, the most horrible thing of all was hunger. Hunger. May we trust in the one who was born in Bethlehem, Bethlehem, the house of bread. He's the bread of life, our Messiah, Yeshua. And let's remember to watch their floor and be ready. We're going to break. We'll be right back. Doug Schwartz here with Watch Therefore Ministries, introducing my new book, Watch Therefore and Be Ready. In a generation that is about to be so caught off guard by the events of the fig tree days of Noah generation, know this, it doesn't have to be you. I wrote Watch Therefore and Be Ready to prepare followers of Messiah Jesus to be who they are and to do what they have been set here to do just before the coming of Messiah Jesus. And that's why for a donation of any amount to Watch Therefore Ministries, Blessing Israeli Believers Poured Out for the Nations, what we will do is send a copy of Watch Therefore and Be Ready. Make sure you mark in your check or on the internet, the name of the book, Watch Therefore and Be Ready to receive your copy. Now, like never before, it's time to watch therefore and be ready. I'm so thankful for this powerful and timely Watch Therefore message, where in Matthew 24 and Matthew 25 in the New Testament gospel, Messiah Jesus tells his disciples to watch therefore and be ready, for we don't know the hour or the day the Son of man is coming. Certainly the other signs that he spoke of just before that are, are bouncing in the red zone today like never before. And he tells his watch therefore and ready disciples to be the faithful servant. They're watching for the master to come and they're doing what the master commanded. And when they stand before him at the judgment seat of Christ, they will hear, well done, thy good and faithful servant. This message is expanding. People are embracing it all over the world with a strong desire to be the faithful servant. And, and it costs lots of money as the TV program is also expanding into other markets. First, I want to say, if you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, please don't send any money into this program. It's our desire that you would receive him as Lord and simply enjoy the program today. But for those of you who would like to lay your treasures up in heaven, this is a great place to do so. And we encourage you to sign up for our monthly newsletters. Uh, you can do so at our watchtherefore.tv website. And when you receive our Blessing Israeli Believers and Poured Out for the Nation's letters, you can know how to pray for and financially sow into uh, this ministry. Blessing Israeli Believers is our To the Jew First ministry. As Romans 1.16 says, the gospel and discipleship is to the Jew first. 
John McTurnan, our co-founding Blessing Israeli Believers partner, and I uh, are so excited about this ministry in Israel. And then our Poured Out for the Nations to the Nations ministry, where the Watch Therefore message is also proclaimed and being embraced so widely. And it, it's expanding. It, it's so exciting as we're in this generation that will see King Jesus come in the clouds because the signs that he spoke of in Matthew 24 and other places are bouncing in the red zones like never before. King Jesus is coming and we need to get ready. There, <laughs> there's not a better way to do so than understanding and embracing the Watch Therefore message. So remember, now like never before, Watch Therefore and be ready. King Jesus is coming. Welcome back to Watch Therefore. We're continuing on in my teaching series for my book, Watch Therefore and Be Ready. In the first part of the program, we looked at one of the four birth pain signs of the coming of Messiah Jesus, which is famine. And there's more hungry people on the planet now than ever. And, and now what we're going to do is we're going to look at uh, the next one, which is pestilence. But first, for anyone who's just joining the program, I'd like to read Matthew 24, verses 7 and 8 again. For a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows or birth pains. Well, a pestilence is a deadly disease often spread by animals. For example, the Black Plague that wiped out so many in Europe was uh, spread by fleas that were uh, on rats. Now listen to these terrible diseases that are spiking all over the uh, world, especially uh, in in Africa, malaria, Zika virus, West Nile virus, dengue fever, yellow fever. Uh, folks, the most dangerous animal on the planet arguably today is the mosquito that spreads these diseases I just mentioned. Uh, and think of this, dengue fever that was wiped out in America is now back in America. Uh, the West Nile virus is one of them I mentioned, and Zika virus now is in America as well. Now, beyond these mosquito-borne uh, pestilences, there are uh, tuberculosis, HIV, AIDS, Ebola, bird flu, pig flu, and, and the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta, recently came out with an article uh, asserting that the age of antibiotics is over, that these viruses and these pestilences um, uh, are mutating around the antibiotics, the firewall of antibiotics, to a point where uh, they're, they're on the last antibiotic for some of these diseases. And even once treatable diseases are now becoming like superbugs, for example, gonorrhea is, is one of them. Uh, there's the MRSA virus, which is often caught while people are in the hospital. The hospital is becoming one of the most dangerous places in America and other countries as well. I spoke with a friend in Texas, and she said that a friend of, a fam of their family uh, went wade fishing out in the Gulf of Mexico. He was dead four days later as he caught a flesh-eating virus. Now, now, is this gloom and doom? Is this, what this, is this a gloom and doom message? Oh, you're one of those gloom and doom preachers. Absolutely not. Yet, yet it would be foolish to ignore these things, which is what so many do. Yet it would be wise to do something in the midst of this time. I think what's important when we consider, is this a gloom and doom message? Am I a gloom and doom messenger? Is what is my motivation for sharing these things with you? Is my motivation to, to get you anxious and scared and nervous, fearful? No, that's the opposite of what my motivation is. And I want you to know, I study these things. I watch different news services all over the world as, as, to learn how, what's going on today pertaining to Bible prophecy. Uh, I look at uh, Arab news, American news, Israeli news, British news, French news, Chinese news. I'm probably leaving some out. And, and, and where some would say, I couldn't do that. That would make me so depressed. Well, certainly I don't like the human suffering and, 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 it, and it's very sad to see the carnage at the same time, I understand Bible prophecy. And so here's what my motivation is for sharing these things with you. It's to make it so we learn again or in a deeper way how to trust in our Savior, Messiah Jesus. These things should provoke us to get closer to Him. 
and in him is fullness of joy in Messiah Jesus is great peace in in Messiah Jesus there there's great confidence in Messiah Jesus there's a way forward in Yeshua Adonai our Lord Jesus his name Yeshua originally in Hebrew Yehoshua Yeshua means Yahweh saves he is my salvation he's my rock and so with these things do that would depress some people if we trust in messiah jesus they should provoke us to go forward and to trust in him while doing so we need to learn again to stand on psalm 91 listen to this he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler, and from what? The perilous pestilence. So to the contrary of wanting to ignore or not look at the reality of this sign of the coming of Messiah Jesus, the pestilence that is spreading over the earth and spiking in the red zone, to the contrary of ignoring it or not wanting to hear it, I'm facing it with the shield of faith. I am provoked to to meditate on the scriptures that promise me protection in the midst of this. Can someone stop and say, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. No, our joy should be full in this hour. And as people are, are getting more fearful, because folks, the reality is it's going to get worse quickly now. It's getting worse fast. Look back ten, five, ten years ago and see how bad things are. It's going to get worse. I'm so thankful President Trump is the president. Yet look at the chaos that comes against him as he makes decisions and policies that are good. Look at the strange weirdness. Why? It's because of the, of the times we live in. And, and, and folks, it's going to get very intense. It's going to get very shaky and there's these the the famine and the pestilence and these other signs are going to spread out and intensify so what should we do we should watch for the coming of messiah jesus every day and we should get ready for his coming we should be that faithful servant who's watching ready and doing what the master commanded and as you do that as you do that these things are only going to push you closer to our lord jesus and what are you going to have greater confidence, greater joy, greater peace, greater sense of accomplishment and purpose. And you'll be ready for him when he takes us up in the clouds to to that place he's been preparing for us that he promised that he would come and get us and take us to. And guess what? When you think, speak, and live the way that I'm talking about, there are others who are going to be panicking as these things intensify And they're going to see you and you're going to be a true, powerful, filled with the Holy Spirit witness with a life that shouts out to a a fearful world, I can help you. I can help you. I can help you. Can the Christian who doesn't want to hear these things and goes into a church that only gives them flowery, um, I want to join you in Wonderland with Alice messages? No, they can't help. Why? Why? Because they're not going to have uh, the filling of the Spirit of the Lord. They're not going to have the confidence in Him. They're going to be just as fearful as everyone else when their house of cards falls. Because the Jesus that they're talking about in most of those kinds of places isn't the one of this book. That's why. And He's the only one who saves. And He's the only one who gives peace and joy and confidence. He's the only one who delivers and heals and forgives and raises up. And he's the one who's coming to take his people very soon in the rapture. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Do these things that I'm telling you about, do they make you fearful? Do these things scare you and frighten you? Well, let these things then provoke you to get closer to our Lord Jesus. He's the one who's in control. It looks like everything's falling apart. Oh, there's famine, there's pestilence. But the reality is, these are signs of his coming. I need to be getting ready. I need to be putting fruit in the basket. I need to be sharing the gospel of Jesus and seeing people saved. I need to do a program called Watch Therefore. What is it he's called you to do? As you watch Therefore and you're getting ready, what are you to be doing to, to win the loss to Jesus the Lord? What are you to be doing to making, in terms of making faithful disciples and, and working your spiritual gifts in the church to build up the body of Christ, to bring light? 
into a dark and dying world. Hallelujah. And, and I'm going to do that right now. Maybe you're watching and you haven't received Jesus as your Savior. And, and, and maybe you would say, yes, these things do frighten me. But I want to tell you there's hope. There's hope that doesn't disappoint. See, our Father who sent our Lord Jesus to die on the cross for your sins to pay for them, he rose again. Hallelujah. He went back to our Father in heaven. He's coming back to get us. That same Father, he, he wants to draw you by his Spirit now. He wants to show you, yes, you've sinned against God. Yes, you're in big trouble. Yes, you're at a place in your life where you desperately need him and he loves you and he will send his spirit to give you understanding that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose again and that you need to turn away from your sins and put your trust and faith in Jesus, our Lord. Yeshua, Yahweh, Jehovah saves. He wants to save you right where you are now. He wants to forgive you. And the great thing about his goodness, his grace that will meet you where you are right now, whoever you are, wherever you are, his grace will not leave you there. If you put your faith in our Lord Jesus, he'll fill you with his Holy Spirit. He'll change your heart, mind, and life, your identity. And he'll pull you out of that place you are and put you on a narrow path that leads to life. It's not easy to follow Jesus. This world's going to get more difficult and more challenging to live in every day. But we have victory, we have strength, we have courage in our Lord Jesus. He says, fear not, for I am with you. Oh, that's great. It's a great program. Not, I'm not talking about this television program, which is, I pray great too. I'm talking about the program the Lord has for us all. Let's pray. Oh, Father in heaven, in Messiah Jesus' name, as our time on this program is winding down, please save, heal, forgive. That someone call, would call upon your name now, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That they would, show, they, they would call upon you, Jesus, save me, I'm a sinner. Forgive me and give me a new life. For everyone who's watching today, bless them, Lord, and thank you. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, we have information to send to you. Contact us there, and we'll send it to you. God bless you. Thank you for watching the program today. Watch Therefore is sponsored by the friends and partners of Watch Therefore Ministries. In future programs, we'll have many more Watch Therefore teachings from the Bible, worship, and exciting interviews with our believing partners in Israel and around the world. Please contact us at doveforisrael at gmail.com. That's D-O-V-F-O-R-I-S-R-A-E-L at gmail.com. And if you would like to subscribe to our newsletter, you can fill out a contact form on the website watchtherefore.tv. We also have audio programs available on our website watchtherefore.tv. We are on social media since it is a great tool to share the gospel and communicate with one another. You can also find us there at Watch Therefore TV. Until next time, we're watching for King Jesus to return. Watch Therefore and be ready. We know he came. The Lamb who was slain, he'll come again. Our conquering King on that day. His sword will go forth to take back and restore.